Hi everyone! We're going to continue our journey on talking about the Brain Warrior's Way. We're talking about mastery, so the book and the program is really designed around that word, mastery. How to develop mastery over your brain and body. And today, we're going to talk about assessment. And, and we're going to talk about four ways to assess. We've been singing that to our kids. Okay, kids we're back. So this is really personal and really important, um, especially to me. We have been helping out someone really close to me and my family, and this became really personal and uh, up close, so so to speak. So I'm a pretty intense person. Those of you who watch us know this. No. Yeah, I know. It's no. kind of hard to believe, but I'm. everyone thinks I'm really warm and fuzzy. Not. Um, but anyways, so this became really important. You are warm. <laughs> kind of fuzzy. But anyways, um, so... As I was helping this person who's very close to me and very special, you know, who has struggled for a long time, it's easy, as you've often said, to call people bad or irresponsible. And I'm one of those people who has done that. Because as somebody who actually has ADD and who never believed in ADD, because I always thought if you just tried hard enough, you'd be Are you crying at Finding Dory, <laughs> really? And he's like, leave me alone. Anyways, so we would call her Dory or they would call her Lucy because she had 19 car accidents. 19 car accidents. She'd constantly back into things or break things or she'd be holding a coffee cup and walk into a counter. And it's easy to say, why aren't you trying harder? What's the matter with you? What's going on with you? And struggled in the past, a long time ago, with um, addiction problems. And we would always just go like, why can't you just get it together? But as I got to know your work and get more involved in what we do, it became really clear to me. So we did a really thorough assessment on her. So you have to assess what's going on and stop the judgment thing. The judgment thing just isn't helpful. In fact, a study done, they actually studied a um, big study on mentally ill, but on people and their perception of the mentally ill, or not just mentally ill. Yeah, I hate the word I, ill. I, I don't like ill. Mentally ill. I know. It's, because if you really understand the statistics, 51% of the U.S. population at some point in their life will have a mental illness. Anxiety, depression, ADD, substance abuse, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, 51%. autism. So it is more normal to have a problem than to not, have not to have a problem. So I'm going to change that word mentally ill to um, psychologically struggling. Okay, I'm just going to use or that mental for health health issue. mental health issue. Okay, so um, but this huge study done um, actually showed that people's perceptions with stigma was that 49% um, of the population actually viewed them as dangerous, and which is why we um, avoid them, don't hire them, and the second most common belief was that um, it was self-inflicted. That they right, control and it. people don't know that Lincoln suffered from severe depression, actually was suicidal twice in his life. Ted Turner has bipolar disorder. A lot of very famous, very accomplished people have suffered. Uh, you know, everybody knows about Robert Downey Jr. and his addiction problems. So it, it is not unusual to struggle it's the smart person when they struggle, they go help me. Just like if you're having problems in business, if you just put your head in the sand and you don't address it, the business goes bankrupt. The same thing happens with brain health issues. And we don't want you to be emotionally, spiritually, physically, or biologically bankrupt. So let's talk and, about and that. And so as we assess people, at Amon Clinics, it's really in these four circles. And we've done this for a very long time, but it works. And also, as you think about assessing in these four circles, that's exactly how you treat or optimize the brain. So the first one is biological. So the brain is an organ, just like your heart is an organ, but it's the only organ we don't screen, right? We screen our hearts, we screen our breasts, not me, but we screen... <laughs> You know, female cervix, prostates, you know, we screen our what skin, to do with everything, this? but we don't screen our brain. And so you have to understand, well, what's the biology of brain health? So on Brain Fit Life, our online community, we actually do a test uh, where we measure 17 areas of cognitive function. So you have to measure 
the physical function of the brain. We also do it with SPECT, that's the uh, imaging study we do at Amen Clinics, but a long time ago we realized not everybody can get a scan. On amenclinics.com right now you can take a free brain health assessment. So you go to amenclinics.com, scroll down the page, you'll see how to take a brain health uh, assessment. Also under biology is how much do you exercise? Uh, what's your diet like? I gotta tell you, it's 50% of mental health issues is food. Right. Get your food But it does right. include things like genetics too. Things run in family. Right. Uh, no doubt about that. Right. Right? Uh, ADD runs in your family. Oh, I, I believe in it now. I'm a believer. In, in my <laughs> family, but things like depression, bipolar disorder, and the friend that you're helping, they have depression, suicide. Many suicides, many, many in right. the family. So there's a biological component to this, but there's also a psychological component, which is how do you think? So it's your development growing up, like I don't know about you, but I was beaten up a lot by my older brother growing up. It wasn't fun. It was, uh, I mean, I got tortured till he realized I was a better playmate than a punching bag. Uh, growing up for you was scary. Yeah. And, and also for the person, stressful. for the person in the family that I'm talking about. So I'm going to, I'm going to incorporate her along here. So her biology was not great. Okay. So she had grown up with um, genetics against her, stacked against her. Um, and she was smoking and having had some other bad habits. That was the biology, not exercising. Um, well, and if you start poisoning your brain right. as a way to deal with the chronic stress, whether it's alcohol or marijuana or cocaine or whatever. Right, and had a um, history of drug abuse, which probably compounded some things in the past. Because it, it, Very it's young. toxic. Right, now, and then add to that the psychology, like you're talking about. So she didn't have the brain training and the mind training and the mental process training but on top of that she had trauma like some I've like worse than most I've seen but she didn't even know that so when we started talking to her about getting some treatment for trauma and helping her do that she's like I don't need treatment for trauma I've never had emotional trauma and I almost fell out of my chair I'm like it's wor it's worse than mine and I thought I was bad growing up so it was a lot worse than what I experienced, and I thought mine was significant. Yours was. And, but this was worse. And so if, you, if you're grading it, it was worse, significantly worse. So, so she's got so that. It's, so it's the stacking process, so you see? So it's development. Right. And also, nowhere did anyone teach her, heck, they didn't teach me or they didn't teach you, how to not believe every stupid thing you think. I mean, it's so important to um, control your mind, put boundaries around your mind, and just ask yourself this question 50 times a day. Is that thought true? Uh, just because you have a thought has nothing to do with whether or not it is true. Thoughts lie, they lie a lot. We'll do a whole uh, podcast on that. So coming up, Brain Warrior's Way podcast. So biological, psychological, social, which is who do you hang out with? Oh my God, if you want to be a drug addict, hang out with drug addicts. Right. If you want to be someone who's successful in life, in relationships, oh. at work, with your money, with your kids, hang out oh. with people who are successful. Oh, so let me, let me just, I'm going to throw something in there. So a lot of people want to hang out with people who make them feel like they're the top of the dog pile. Like they're the top, right? The dog pile. Right? No, I'm not kidding. Like they want to feel like they're superior. Um, and I think there's something to hang out with some people like that where you're giving back and you're mentoring. But let me just tell you something. When I look at my um, sort of social peer group and friends, I'm sort of at the bottom of the rung and I love that. Do you know why? Because people are contagious. I and I am really. Of you at the bottom oh, no, no, I'm telling you. Seriously, they're more successful. They're, they give more, they do more, they're smarter. They're, and I love that because it's contagious. And I'm just hoping they rub off. So on me. you become. So, like the people you hang out with. Right. It's so Find clear. the smartest people you, know, you can find and hang out with. We know colds are contagious. People, people are, are contagious. contagious. So you want to know what you're really going to become? Just it's like the people out you hang out you with. are spending time with. And then the last circle is the spiritual circle. And you don't hear many psychiatrists or nurses for that matter talking about that but this is your deepest sense of meaning and purpose. And I think Why this is where you 
on the planet. I actually think this is where the power and the juice is at. I think this is amazing. If you've been through trauma, like I have been, like this other family member of mine has been, if you've been through a lot of pain, this is where you get to get it back. Because when you give back and you transform that pain into purpose, when you figure out why the world's a better place because you breathe, what you do to help other people, studies actually show that people who give back don't suffer the same health effects of their stress and of their trauma that people who don't That's and that really focus on it. It's when you told me about 30%, that study, 30% less. That was really so the people who visualize it and view it as traumatic and terrible and stressful, they die 30% more often of stress related illnesses. People who give back and don't view it that way and actually view it as a learning experience, zero, it's zero. So it's 30% or zero, you, you choose. So in getting truly well, getting truly optimized, there are biological things you can start doing today from eating right, exercise, simple supplements. Yes, we cannot change our genes, but we can change the expression of those genes. So you have to, so once you go through this, you have to let me tell the rest of the story. Do you think I could ever stop you? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> so biological interventions, and this is where medicine sometimes works, or um, in our friend, she actually had something called Erlen's That's syndrome. That's what I wanted to I -R -L -E -N. You just, So you can you just learn about IRLEN.com. You just stole I'm the my one that story. figured it out. Seriously? So. No, I was going to like Deal make you it. look good. <laughs> I, hold when on. I heard no, about 19 accidents and parking so, on the curb and... We were driving. We were driving. I don't usually do that to him, but I actually want no, to give him. No, she does it to me all the time. So I want to give him credit. No, the truth. This I'm is a truth. really good story. <laughs> so we were driving, and she was in the car, and she actually didn't put it on her assessment. She didn't write down some of the stuff she was seeing. She was seeing visual disturbances, and some. she would get really bad headaches under fluorescent lights, and she was seeing blue auras and certain things like that. She didn't write it down because she thought people were going to think she was crazy. So she didn't write it down, but she told us. And so we're driving and Daniel like stops the car. He goes, I know what's wrong with you. I, I know what the problem is. And I was like, what? I'm like, like, what is, what are you talking about? He goes, I know what she has. She has Erlen syndrome. So we sent her to go get assessed at another clinic to go get assessed. We did our full assessment. And then we sent her somewhere else to get assessed for Erlen syndrome. She had the very worst end of the spectrum. In fact, she said the founder of her own um, clinic said that it was one of the worst cases she had seen. So she's got a visual processing problem. So it's easy to call her Dory. It's easy to call her Lucy. But when you really understand what's going on, that she's suffering from a visual processing syndrome, you begin to change your empathy. You begin to go, oh, wow, how did she make it this far? Right. With this going on. So important. Um, so biological interventions, psychological interventions, which is dealing with uh, past trauma. Because if you've had trauma and you never deal with it, it lives in your head and it colors every experience in life you have. And then learning, of course, not to believe every stupid thing you think. We call them killing the ants, the automatic negative thoughts. And then social in interventions, which is who you hang out with really does matter. This is where support groups yeah. uh, can really be helpful. Uh, but you want to make sure the people in the support group are helpful right. and not going, come on, let's and go get a beer you, after the So they help group. teach you something called responsibility, which doesn't mean you take all the blame, but it does mean that you have the ability to respond. Make sense? You want as much responsibility as you can take because it takes you out of the victim mode and it gives you the ability to respond. And then the spiritual intervention is really thinking about writing down what's your deepest sense of meaning and purpose. In the Brain Warrior's Way, our new book, uh, it's based on these seven principles, mindset, assessment, sustenance, training and habits, essence, turning your pain into purpose. So we go into how to do that. But it's why is the world a better place because you breathe. And if you don't know, that then becomes your homework to figure that out. And then R is responsibility. Again, like you said, it's your ability to respond. 
and why is we're doing this for years. This is not a 10 day program. Stop lying to yourself. You know, this is, you gotta, you gotta be at this so that you can rewire your brain over time. You'll feel better in 10 days, but we want you to stay on it for years because we know this is a program that can help you prevent Alzheimer's disease, treat depression, feel less anxious, improve your energy focus, memory. We know it can do all of those things if you make it part of your life. Did I tell you how proud I was of you when you did that? That's why I wanted to tell the story, because it was really cool. I love Kirsten. <laughs> so, brainwarriorsway.com, stay with us. Bye.